Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to use your GHL doser as an ATO pump when connected to a Profilux 4 controller. We'll do this using the GHL Connect app. For this setup, you will need to have your GHL doser already connected and assigned to your P4 controller. You'll also need an available dosing pump head, one or two GHL sensors, either float or optical, and lastly, a matching set of brackets and assembly rod for positioning the ATO sensors in your sump. If you're planning to use two sensors for the ATO task, you'll also need a PLLY splitter cable. To get started, connect the GHL flow or optical sensor to an available level port on your P4. Be sure to take note what color port on the P4 you are connecting the sensors to. If you connect one or both sensors to the purple port, it is connected to level inputs 1 and 2. If one or both are connected to the green port, it is connected to level inputs 3 and 4. If you are connecting these sensors to an expansion card, the level port numbering will continue beyond level 3 and 4. For example, if you have a PLM 4 level expansion card, the level numbering would be 5 and 6 for one port and 7 and 8 for the second port. If you choose to connect a single sensor directly to the level port without a splitter cable, the level sensor numbering will automatically be assigned to the first number of that port. In other words, if you were to connect one sensor directly to the level 1 and 2 port, the sensor would automatically be assigned as level sensor number 1. Connecting a sensor directly to the level 3 and 4 port would automatically assign it as level sensor number 3. If you're using two sensors, you can either connect each sensor to its own port, or you can use the splitter cable to connect both sensors to a single port. If you choose to use a splitter cable, the level sensor numbering will automatically be assigned to the first and second number of that port. For example, connecting two sensors to the level 1 and 2 port would make one end of the splitter cable level sensor number 1, and the other end level sensor number 2. Once you have the sensors connected, Open up the GHL Connect app and connect to your Profilux. From the dashboard, press the menu icon. Select Control, then select Level. Select an unused control circuit. In the General Settings section, press Operation Mode and select an ATO function. If you have one sensor for your ATO, select Auto Top Off. If you'd like to use two sensors, choose either min-max control or ATO with two sensors. Select min-max control if you want to use each sensor as a minimum and maximum point for your water level control. With this option, sensor 1 is the maximum point and sensor 2 is the minimum point. The moment sensor number 2 detects a low water level, the assigned dosing pump will turn on and stay on until it reaches sensor number 1. When normal water level is reached, the dosing pump will turn off. Select ATO with two sensors if you want to use two sensors to register the same water level. With this option, these sensors are placed side by side. The assigned dosing pump will turn on only when both sensors detect a low water level. Next, type in a description for this task. Once that's done, set the desired maximum on time. This max on time feature is a fail safe for this function. If for any reason your assigned ATO sensor does not respond within the allowed time, the fail safe will automatically shut down the assigned dosing pump to prevent an overflow or flood. For example, by setting this feature to 5 minutes, you allow the assigned pump to run for up to 5 minutes. If this time limit expires, the Profilux will trigger the fail safe and activate an alarm. When an alarm is activated, the Profilux LED indicator light will begin flashing red. For this feature, we recommend you set a time that will give the assigned dosing pump enough time to dispense the necessary amount of ATO water. Once your maximum on time is set, select if you'd like to have the alarm automatically reset after the failsafe has been triggered. With this option selected, the alarm will automatically be reset once the assigned ATO sensor detects normal water level. If you'd like for the ATO to be always on, leave this option selected. If you'd rather run the ATO on certain days or times, 
Disable this option and select the timer number that will be responsible for determining the on-off times of this function. The next step will be to select the sensor number that will be used for this task. For example, if you have a single sensor connected directly to the level 1 and 2 port, select 1. If you have two sensors connected to the level 1 and 2 port with a splitter cable, select 1 and 2. If you have two sensors and each are connected directly to their own port, select the first number that belongs to the respective port. Once that's done, press save, then press the back arrow icon at the top left of your screen. If you wish to set a specific reaction time for your ATO sensors, you can do so by selecting the Sensors tab. Here is where you'll be able to set a delayed reaction time for your sensors. By default, all sensors are set to react after one second. Now that the ATO function is set up, it's time to choose the dosing pump which will be used for your ATO task. Press the menu icon, press the back arrow, and select dosing pumps. Select the pump you want to use. If you'd like to keep track of the fluid levels in your ATO reservoir, leave this section as is. If you'd like to switch off this feature, select this option. If you're keeping track of your ATO fluid levels, type in the capacity of your container. The minimum field is the threshold for when an alarm should be triggered. If you'd like to trigger an alarm when the fluid level drops below the minimum number, activate the feature here. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and take a look at the Pump Reacts To section. Here is where you tell the pump to react to the ATO task. Select Switch Channel, then select a non-physical socket or switch channel number. For example, if you have one power bar assigned to sockets 1 through 6, set the index to 7. If you have two power bars located on sockets 1 through 12, select 13. Once that's done, press Save. The last step will be to assign the ATO task to the switch channel number you just selected. Press the back arrow, press the menu icon, and select Switch Channels. Select the switch channel number you chose in the previous step. Since we chose to use switch channel 7, we're going to select 7. Type in a description for this switch channel. Set the function to Fill Water ATO Only. The number here corresponds to the control circuit number you used when you created the ATO function. For example, since we created the ATO function on control circuit number 1, we would select 1. If we had used control circuit number 2, we would have selected 2. Once that's done, press Save. Your ATO is now set up. Whenever the flow or optical sensor detects a low water level in your sump, the sensor will tell the assigned switch channel to turn on. Since the dosing pump is set to react to this same socket, the pump will turn on and stay on until the sensor detects normal water level. When that happens, the dosing pump will turn off. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this video or any GHL product, feel free to contact us on any one of our support channels. If you'd like to receive notifications when we release new videos, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, folks, take care.